India's former chief economic advisor K V Subramanian has been appointed as executive director for India on the board of the IMF. He takes over in November and has an initial term of three years. Dr. Subramanian, even after his term as CEA, has been a keen watcher of the Indian economy, a prolific writer, and he joins us today for an analysis of the state of the Indian economy and the global economy, which will also be his brief in the IMF. Dr. Subramanian, thank you very much for finding time for us and many congratulations from all of us on your appointment. Thank you very much, Lata. It's very nice to be again back uh, chatting with you, Lata. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Dr. Subramanian, you know, uh, I must start with uh, the uh, uh, Indian growth trajectory. You know, when you were in the seat uh, at CEA, you had spoken about a V-shaped recovery. Uh, are things panning out to your satisfaction? Our growth is one of the fastest this year. Uh, absolutely. I think, um, you know, when we look back at the, the data, um, clearly GDP growth uh, has registered the V-shaped recovery that, um, you know, we had predicted in uh, uh, September of 2020. Um, Combined with that, I think what is quite critical, and that goes back to the policy that we implemented, the macro and fiscal policy we implemented, we're going to have growth without actually the kind of inflation that the rest of the globe is seeing. So, you know, the global economy is basically looking like one that will have very anemic growth, possibly in a recession, um, and very high inflation. In contrast, India will be the country that will grow the fastest among the large economies for sure, and will have inflation that actually is, you know, will be in control. It's a little higher than average, but I think that if you look at the data, the advanced economies are looking at 400% higher than, you know, at their average inflation, while India, you know, up until the previous print um, was about 4% higher, and which has since cooled down. So I think, you know, we do seem to be in a good spot. Uh, we will lead the global uh, economy, you know, uh, this year and going forward as well. Okay. Uh, well, that point is taken that uh, uh, we are the fastest now. But, uh, uh, I mean, I'll put some buts. If you drew the trajectory, say, uh, if you compared FY20 GDP to FY22 GDP, uh, the amount itself, we are only 1.8% higher in real terms over two years. And then if you come to, F, you know, all of 22, IMF has data that at the moment we look like we will be a 159 trillion rupee economy. But if we had grown at the previous trajectory, we would have been a 184 trillion economy. So... You know, the second half of even this year, uh, first quarter we, we are going to get because of base effect 16% uh, GDP. But by the second half, we are slowing to 4, 4.5%. Do you worry that there are some structural constraints? So I think firstly, I, 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 I'm, I would be belaboring the obvious, Lata, but I think the entire world economy actually had to suffer because of the COVID. Yeah. Uh, unlike previous crises, this required economic restrictions and therefore there was loss of output everywhere. I think the, the other key point which is important to remember is that, you know, uh, see, if you have a country that is growing at, you know, that's been growing at two and a half percent, the slope for potential GDP looks like this. If you have a country that's been growing at six and a half percent on average, the slope looks like this. And when you have then economic activity, loss of economic activity because of COVID for everyone, right? The one, the country, the higher slope, obviously, you know, will basically have a greater loss of, of uh, GDP. That's mechanical. And I think mm. this is something that, you know, has to be recognized. Um, it, we, we did have a, a, a more stringent lockdown. I think we covered this in the economic survey as well. And, and that was something that was required for health reasons. Um, so I think there are good reasons why this has happened. Looking forward, I do think that, you know, we are in a good spot. And, you know, if you would recall in many interactions with you when I was in North Block as well, I said, this decade, India will grow at 7%, you know, plus on average. And I still maintain that. Yes, there is, you know, um, the Ukraine war actually and some of the global economy has created uncertainty. You know, and I must particularly point out that a, a lot of our, you know, uh, growth is dependent on private investment. And private investment, actually, when there's uncertainty, you know, that sort of holds back. So in some sense, you know, the Ukraine war came at a very inopportune moment, you know, when India was really looking to sort of take off on the private investment side, you know, what we economists call the second order effects, uncertainty. I think once that settles down and it looks like it is settling down better, um, I think, you know, uh, uh, in India India will, will, will continue to grow. I will mention, I think, you know, um, I do think that the uh, uh, sort of some of the aspects of the impact of global 
economy on India are overblown. Um, I, I think we are far more immunized um, and we can get into the details. I'm sure you'll have some questions to ask on that, but, but I'll, I would state that I don't think we will be as uh, uh, you know, impacted by the global situation as we were possibly during the global financial crisis, for instance. Well, actually, that was going to be my next question to you. Uh, you know, at, at the moment, Europe is probably already in a recession. China is, uh, you know, past two very poor quarters. Uh, maybe right. the, the second half is going to be better for China, but it's still uh, an economy which is in deep pain and lockdowns. And US, right. we are told, uh, uh, after two, year, two quarters of contracting growth, uh, is likely because of rate hikes to slow down. If the go globe slows down, then mm -hmm. is it going to be difficult for us to grow alone? No, I, I think this is a good question, but I want to actually answer this rigorously rather than, you know, I see a lot of commentary that is based, you know, on, on, on sort of um, a less rigorous analysis. Let's take GDP the way we think about it as consumption plus investment plus government spending okay. plus net exports. And let's look at each element and understand what will be the impact of the global economy on each of these factors. Let's take consumption. You know, a, a lot of uh, consumption is basically some part comes from imports, obviously, and that may get impacted. But consumption actually primarily is a domestic phenomenon. So I, you know, while again, some part possibly, you know, maybe durables, et cetera, may be impacted a little bit because of the global economy, I don't anticipate that to be impacted significantly. And that's your close to 60% of the overall pie. Uh, investment, I already mentioned, I think that is something which is getting impacted by uncertainty more than it should be. It's more, I think, the sentiment rather than the fundamentals. If you look at the next you know, component, which is government spending, and that has been a seminal change that we brought in during the COVID era, where government is spending a lot on infrastructure and actually the, the crowding in of that should happen actually once the uncertainty settles down. That leaves you know, the last element, which is exports. I think on the export side, I have been reading, I think the US seems to actually not be doing as bad as people may have predicated. I recently, you know, last week at ISB, the MasterCard CEO was here and they look at consumption data on a regular basis and they were saying, he was saying that the US does not seem to be looking as bad. And that's good news. Overall itself, I think exports are actually doing, you know, better than, than anticipated. So I don't see if you put all this together, I think in investment is the one element and exports to some extent, and those are not such big contributors. So when you think rigorously through this, I think you know, viewers will be able to see that people are overblowing the impact of the global economy. Um, I think far, you know, sometimes if you know, weigh far too much on sentiment and too less on fundamentals, but if you weigh on the fundamentals, I think you will start seeing why I'm saying that the impact of the global economy and you know, sort of the anemic global economy will not be large on the Indian economy. No, absolutely. You know, just uh, yesterday or day before, we had an interview of Richard Thaler, the Nobel Prize winning behavioral yeah. economist on CNBC. And he yeah, says, I, I can't believe that this is a recession at all. Uh, there, <laughs> there, there is absolutely no signs of recession uh, in the US. I, I mean, I take your point that the, the economy is at the moment growing very strong. But, you know, people are worrying about several other structural trends. Uh, you know, a Credit Suisse paper, uh, 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 Zoltan War is speaking about, uh, rearming, reshoring, restocking, and rewiring as trends which might continue to keep commodity prices higher. So, do you think that for the world as a whole, uh, mm -hmm. the 20s may be a decade of inflation? No, I, I think that's a good point. Um, so, I, I think the uh, global economy will see very likely high commodity prices. And I'll tell you why. And I, this, here's where I think there are important learnings from you know, what India did, which actually could be implemented. If you recall, you know, uh, amidst COVID, we implemented supply side policies because we took into account that if there is basically no increase in supply and demand is pushed back through you know, fiscal policy, then you will definitely have inflation. Um, now, what has happened actually, and I've been observing you know, the global economy, there's very little being done on the supply side. Yeah. Even advanced economies are actually, you know, a recent act actually that the US has brought in there is some, I mean, I sort of, I would say, uh, um, I think they're taking inspiration from our PLI scheme uh, yeah, yeah. to do something similar, obviously at a higher order. Uh, but I think that is possibly the first move towards working on the supply side. Fair. If the supply sides are worked on, I think the globe commodity prices will not be as heated up as they actually will be otherwise. Um, but that said, what is the, you know, <laughs> the, the, the impact for India? 
I think for India, actually, uh, especially with the Atma Nirbha Bharat push, and this is why I want to actually explain, you know, given what has happened after the global financial crisis, the frequency of global sort of negative phenomena has increased. And therefore, mm. you know, India for it to actually tap into its strengths and become re more resilient was something that was a policy focus. And that I think will help us going forward. Mm. Uh, last bit, you mentioned about China in the last question, and I forgot yeah. to actually respond to that. I look at actually China, you know, uh, slowing down as a huge opportunity for India, especially on the export side. Um, I think, you know, if anything, we sort of do uh, at the margin compete with them. You know, obviously, they're at the, on average, they're much higher than us. But at the margin, we do compete. So China slowing down, I would not look that as, 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 as bad news for, for Indian economy, particularly. Mm. But I think global economy, it, will, it would behoove, you know, policymakers to actually start focusing on the, on the supply side measures. Otherwise, what you fear might actually come to, you know, sort of manifest um, in this decade. Mm. No, I take your point. Uh, we are certainly uh, being seen as a very good uh, uh, second destination for people wanting to diversify out of China. Uh, yes, we've got competition from Vietnam and uh, Philippines and Malay, uh, Indonesia, but we seem to be been doing well. The recent news from Apple 14, uh, the right. uh, iPhone 14 also is uh, extremely encouraging news. But just to stick to the inflation issue, if the mm -hmm. world is going to suffer higher commodity prices for various reasons, uh, because right. of uh, uh, supply shocks, do you think we will also have a sticky inflation problem? We will come down from the current closer to 7% to below 6, which is the MPC's mandate. But will the journey towards 4 be a, a tough one and a long one? No. So here's again, let's, let's analyze this carefully, right? Um, so if you look at the components of Indian inflation, almost 50% of it comes from, from, from food, food, food elements, right? Food items. Um, of which, you know, oils, um, for instance, sunflower oil, because Ukraine is a big exporter, you know, and sort of Indonesia had put a ban on palm oil and that that increased. Uh, but I think, you know, if, if it is the case that these are settling down, maybe a large part of this uh, component of inflation or food inflation may not be that big a worry. Um, that leaves basically the commodity prices, which especially crude, you know, as um, and if you would recall, we've had, you know, conversations on this. Overall, even accounting for second order effects, um, you know, on transportation and thereby cost push inflation, etc. You know, the, the, the contribution of crude to Indian inflation is less than 10%. You know, it varies anywhere between 6 to 8%, depending on how much actually is getting passed through. But I think it's not as big, again, when you look at the numbers, the fundamentals, rather than just basically talk in the air. Um, so I don't see, again, you know, a, a, that large uh, a sort of a, a pass through from global inflation. One caveat I want to mention, and here I think monetary policy plays a, plays a very important role. As you know, it was in the case of fiscal policy, we had the clarity and we had the courage of conviction to be different from the world because we knew we were doing the right thing. And I think, you know, in some sense, given that India, therefore, is in a different spot because fiscal policy has not pushed monetary policy as hard as, the, as, as in the other, other economies, I think there is a reason for us to actually think for ourselves rather than basically copy paste uh, you know uh, the, the advanced economy and I, I i have been sort of saying this many many times i think it's time you know we have the capabilities we have the confidence to be able to think for ourselves rather than have to you know cut paste even the united states for that matter uh, i think that is something which is very important as a caveat i would mention for monetary policy i i think the rbi is extremely alive and proud of the fact uh, that uh, we have some advantages over the US and the world also perceives us that way. But you know, there is something like interest rate differential which impacts the currency and spillovers. Sure. That question to you, Dr. Subramaniam, after a very short break, back in a jiffy.